Hello and welcome back to the Brothers Grimdark and today we've got a painting tutorial for you. I'm going to be showing you how I paint my animists who are our house adeptus mechanicus or potentially dark mechanicum depending on how they're feeling. Um, our heart me. Um, so I've developed my own kind of custom paint scheme for this. It's pretty simple um, but it has a couple of fun techniques involved. So I'm going to just walk you through how I paint one of my infantry. Um, I've converted up a my own version of the new sniper, this who's got a very silly name, Scatros. Is that what he's called? A Sidonian Scatros? There's too many like Kratos, Kratos type things. So one of those. Um, so I built my own uh, and I thought that'd be a good example of just kind of one of the more normal infantry type people to, to show you. Uh, so we're going to walk through just kind of the basic steps, the techniques I use along the way, all the colors, and hopefully that's useful for you. Uh, there's a lot of kind of standard techniques in here which you should be able to apply to any of your own projects, just kind of mixing the colors up as you, as you go. Uh, I've base coated in black and then given them a Xenithal uh, coat of white on top. So it was just chaos, the Citadel paints Chaos Black and uh, White Scar. So you can see from the top, um, he looks pretty white, but from below we've got all those nice dark shades in there. So we've already kind of got our basic pre-highlights in place. So the first thing is the sort of brass area. So I use a uh, Retributor armor for those uh, and this goes on things like the bionics and their helmets their heads that sort of thing Anything which has a bit more of the Mechanicum feel to it that, to be honest um, So things like the servo skull on this guy. I think I will do his head um, And the sort of Mechanicum logo on the back. Really? So that's the first coat done And next we're gonna do the silver parts and of course standard we're just using lead belcher for this nice and simple so for this, it's more like pieces like the, the weapons, belt buckles, um, grenades, any sort of less exciting metal parts, more functional stuff, um, antennas and things. And they just get a coat of lead belcher. Question for you at home. Do you drill the barrel holes for las guns? For some reason, it makes tons of sense for me on bolt guns and things like that, but for some reason on las guns, it doesn't. I have no idea why I think that, but I do. Let me know, what do you, do you drill those or not? And now we get to start filling in all the bits, um, which we didn't paint metal, with contrast paints. Uh, so this is kind of like fill in the blank um, sort of spots here. So you can kind of use whichever colors you want um, as you develop your own color schemes, but I'll be showing you what I do for the animists. So first thing is um, I'm going to use Basilicanum Grey. And this uh, you tend to use for things like their boots, if they're wearing gloves, um, that, sort of, that sort of thing, mostly, mostly those parts. Um, but this is also why I do the metallics first, is I also use this as a wash over all of the silver parts. So that it helps just kind of be able to reduce all that down to one step. So I'm going to paint his, his boots now, and on any of those silver parts, are going to get a wash of this too. So next up, one of my favorites is Griff Charger Gray. It's got a really nice bluey hue to it, so I really like this color um, in general, but uh, again, I'm also going to put this over all of the gold parts. This really cools down the color of the gold and gives it kind of, I really like the look of it because it's, it gives it a sort of weathered look, but not sort of the typical sort of rust. Um, so I just, uh, yeah, I think it's one of my favorite combinations I came up with for this particular army. Um, so yeah, so for this, the Griff Charger Grey is going to go over all of the gold parts and I also use this for their trousers. That's about the only place I use it on the rest of the model. Um, yeah, we'll give that. On this one, actually, because he's got this kind of camo rope thing over um, his gun, I'm not going to paint that camo because I'm not going to paint his cloak camo. So I think on this particular model, I'm actually going to use Griff Charger Grey on that as well, um, just to give it a little bit extra. Next, we're going to do things like the weapon casing, the black parts. Um, black Legion for this. Black Legion is uh, just gray out of the pot, black paint. Um, so for this one, it's mostly things like the, the casing on the weapons I use. I use also Black Templar, we'll get to that in a little bit, for areas like pouches and things which I don't want to be quite as dense a black. So for this, just mostly on the weapons. Or if they're holding like a control pad or something like that. Okay, so we got the first black on and now we're going to do the second black. <laughs> so this one I'm going to use Black Templar for. And as I mentioned, I use this more for the areas which are a little bit softer or maybe uh, metallic or things like that. So uh, things like pouches, straps, belts, and most of his backpack I'm going to do with uh, Black Templar. Okay, we are getting there. So next up is um, Sigvald Burgundy, really nice color. 
Um, so this is one I use for base coating all the red areas. So this is usually their coats. Uh, and for this guy, I'm gonna do his cloaks just so he fits in with the rest of the army nicely. Um, this is another one like the Griff Charger Grey, which I tend to find might need two coats. Um, and it also helps really like give you a nice rich red color. I'm gonna to switch to a slightly nicer brush for this because um, you want to be like, this is the last color on there. I've been fairly neat so far, uh, but don't want to get this uh, spilling over any lines. There's a few little neat detailed nooks and crannies we've got to get into here. So I want to make sure I don't ruin any of my previous work. So I'm still gonna be using a like size three brush here, quite a large brush, but a slightly newer one with a better point on it. Okay, so that is all of the contrast coats base coated on now. Uh, the only other base coat I do is for the armor plates. And I don't use a contrast paint for this, just because I haven't found one that's the quite the right color for me yet. Um, so this is for usually what armor panels are. So a lot of the infantry, they tend to have, have like either like a, maybe a helmet or shoulder pads or something like that. This guy doesn't, but he does have knee pads. So I'm going to do those with the blue just so he does have something which ties him in with everything else. And for this, I'm using Night Lord's Blue because I use Night Lord's Blue in just about every model I paint, apparently. So I'm just going to get a little dollop of this. And uh, yeah, we're going to do his little knee pad things. There we go. So now everything should have a coat of paint on it. Um, the only parts which I haven't on this model are the skin tones. I'm going to do those separately afterwards. Um, and the only thing that I have to do is I'm just going to wait for this to dry. And then I'm going to give a second coat on the gray and the Sigvald Burgundy. And then we're going to get into highlights. So we'll be back once this is dried off. Okay, so now we have all of the contrast coats done. We've basically base coated everything at this point. Next comes possibly what is the most controversial part of how I paint this model. And I'll explain a little bit what I'm going to do. So one issue I have with the sort of slap chop style is whenever you're working with like contrast type paints, you tend to get, they're, because they're a bit more dilute and they're going to go into the recess and things, even though the paints are quite saturated, you end up with this effect where all of the concentration has gone into the shadow areas um, and you've lost some of the saturation on, the, on the, the brighter areas, which looks a little bit odd to me. So there's two things we're gonna do about that. The next step after this is going to be to go and do some of the highlights. I think that makes sense um, to kind of bring back a little bit of extra color there. But one thing I also think is kind of important is to actually knock back the saturation in the shadow areas. And to do that, I'm going to do the old classic thing of basically giving almost the whole model a wash of Null Noil. I am also going to use a Null Noil gloss for the, um, the metallic areas. They don't sell Null Noil gloss anymore, but you can replicate it just with Null Noil with a little gloss varnish in it. So now we're going to do the opposite side of that, which is the highlights. So we're basically going to go through all the colors that we did before, and we're going to give everything uh, a highlight. And we're gonna use slightly different techniques to kind of give a different idea of what the materials that it made of are. Uh, but we'll go through those as we go through each of the colors. So first off, we're gonna do uh, Rack Earth Flesh, and this is gonna go over the bits that we did with um, Basilicana, so mostly his boots. Boots, I kind of want to have the idea that they're sort of beaten up leather. Um, so I'm gonna be doing sort of streaky patterns um, and just, yeah, picking out the main sort of highlight areas, but it's okay if it's not the smoothest, we kind of want to actually have a bit of texture in there as we're kind of doing this. So next up, we're going to do um, the bits we did with um, Griff, Griff Charger Grey. Uh, so that's mostly his trousers and on this guy, the, the wrap I put on the on the gun as well. And for this, we're going to use Fenrisian Grey. That's again, a bit more of a bluey grey colour. And for this, we're going to do a little bit more like a stippling sort of technique. And that's because for some reason I decided when I was doing the trousers the first time I wanted it to look almost um, a bit more suede-esque and I give it a slightly different texture from the from the boots and some of the other areas that we're going to do. Hopefully you can see now we've got a little bit more color and texture on those uh, gray areas and on his boots. Thunderhawk blue and this is for the black uh, areas on the gun barrel so for this I want it to look more like it's a um, bit more polished, a bit more well cared for. So not as much texture in this. So we're gonna really focus on sort of sharp edge highlights and uh, drawing lines where um, it'd be catching the light. This is quite, quite fun about painting like this is some of it is the color choices and other times it's just painting in different ways with like either stippling or um, streaks and things. Uh, you can get very different textures. Okay, so that's the first highlight on the black. We'll do another coat of that one, or another highlight on that later to just give it some spots, but we'll come back to that. 
So next up, we're going to do the other black areas, the, the lighter black. Um, for this, we're going to do Eshin Gray. So this is going to be on like the, the belt buckles, the straps, things like that. And this one's going to be a bit more similar to the boots, um, where again, I'm trying to make this look a bit more like a worn leather. So we're going to mostly focus on the edges and raised areas, but it's okay to add some like streaks and um, a little bit less consistency with the, the blends and things because we want it to look like it's been, been beaten up a little bit more. Rust gray next for the blue armor area. So for this guy, it just is knee pads. Um, but usually there'd be shoulder pads or chest plates and things like that. And last, we're going to work on the red now. The red's really fun for me uh, because, again, this is an area where you can start adding more texture and sort of decide what sort of material you want the, the cloaks and coats to be made out of. I, I really like using streaks for this to give it a little bit more of an idea, like it's a sort of knitted or woven material. And it's, again, a bit more worn. So we're going to, again, focus on the the raised edge areas, but we're going to sort of streak across them um, and making sure that those are the, the part, parts that are brightest, but we're using almost streaks to make blends rather than trying to do like smooth blending or things like that. So for this, I'm using, sorry, I forgot to mention, Evil Sun Scarlet. So that wouldn't actually be a bad place to stop if you wanted to, do, if you're happy with that. We're going to go one level deeper now and do a second layer of highlights on some of those areas. I don't bother redoing, giving every area multiple highlights, especially just for kind of your standard infantry. Um, but there's a few spots that I kind of want to go and um, add a bit more to. The first one is going to be the black um, that I talked about earlier. So we got up to um, Thunderhawk before, but now I'm going to do Ulthuan Gray. And I'm just going to do a spot highlight of this on the very brightest areas. So now we're going to use, what we're going to use? Uh, we're going to go back to Fenrisian Blue. I knew I had an extra bit of that. And this is going to go on the blue armor panels. Again, on this guy, there's not too many of, but sometimes when there's larger areas, um, I, this is why it does get a second highlight for me usually. And this is a bit of a more of a spot highlight again, just on the very brightest patches. All right, next I'm going to get Wraithbone. And I'm going to put a little spot of this on my wet palette and mix it with a little bit of the Evil Sun Scarlet from earlier. And this is what we're going to use to do the highlights on the red. Uh, so now we're going to go over the, the bright spots on the on the red. So again, aim for the shoulders, those brightest points on the ridges. And again, we're going to sort of stipple and use streaks. So it's not just a, a straight highlight. It's adding even more texture to what we had before. And now finally up on the red, last little step here is we're just going to do a little bit of pure wraith bond on the very, very brightest points. And this might, might look a little bit weird at this point, but we're going to blend it in a little bit later with a wash. So just to blend all of those pieces in now, we're going to do the last two washes. Um, so we're going to use Caraber Crimson on the red parts and Drakenhof Nightshade on the blue parts. Again, on this model, there's not a lot of blue, but on some other models, you might have larger areas, which we've done those two previous coats to. So you might need a little bit more um, blending and Drakenhof Nightshade's quite nice to tie that all together. Now, the last thing to do before we get onto the very uh, final piece is just to highlight the um, metallics a little bit again, because we've already kind of dulled them down with contrast paints. We've given them a wash of null oil. So um, what we want to do is bring back just a little bit of extra highlights to them. And for this, all I'm going to use is lead belcher. And I'm going to do that for both the silver and the gold area. Again, for the gold, I kind of wanted it to look a bit more beaten up and worn. Uh, so I, I think that, that works quite well. So the very last stage, we've pretty much done everything on him now. The only thing which is left are the sort of glowing details. And this is a, my favorite step to do at the end of the model. I think it really kind of brings everything to life and gives it, for me, that sort of signature look of this particular army. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to go find all of those areas which would be glowing, like um, the lenses, uh, bits on his backpack. Sometimes they've got like a sort of plasma weapon, things like that. And I'm going to sort of rebase coat them uh, with Gracier. I don't use a pure white for this because I want to have another level to go up earlier. So just a kind of like slightly darker later time. Um, so just a slightly slightly off white is a, is good for this. Okay, so now that we've got that base coat reestablished, the next thing I'm going to do is the sort of galore area around it. That's what helps sell this idea that they're they're lit up. So for that, I'm going to use Sotek Green. Um, what's quite nice if you're doing sort of glow effects is to use a slightly off color from what the light emitting source is. So for me, these are going to be green lights. So I actually like to use a slightly bluier green uh, for the, the light, the, the OSL around this. Um, a good example of this is if you look at um, something that might be, a, you think of as a red light, the glow from it might be red, but the very center might be more yellow. 
Uh, so think about the sort of spectrum of light colors and that will help you um, when, you're, when you're doing this to sell a slightly more organic looking uh, glow effect. And then we're going to do the basically exact same thing, but with Gauss Blaster and just focusing really on the very edges of this. This is kind of like an edge highlight for the glow effect. All right, so now we've done that little edge highlight. And now what we're going to do is go back to the source of the light and we're going to paint the very brightest parts of that. So like the centers of the lenses or wherever the source of the, the light is for your power weapons and things um, with a pure white. And for this, I actually really like to use um, the Liquitex acrylic ink um, straight out of the pot basically. It's very thin, um, so it's quite good if you, if you are using it for recesses, you can actually get it to, to pop in there. Otherwise, you can just use it as, a, as an already kind of thinned down white. And it's really nice for, I find, for doing these types of glow effects. All right, now the final step of this is I'm going to basically wash everything um, to create this, the, the green glow effect from this. So I'm gonna take uh, warp lightning, contrast paint, and I'm gonna mix it one-to-one -one with contrast medium, and Lamia mediums. I really want this to be fairly thin or we're just kind of tinting everything. And I do want it to run into the recesses where it's a little bit darker so that the very centers of the sources remain quite bright. Uh, so we do want those to be almost white still, just maybe slightly tinted. Um, and we are also gonna paint the OSL area around this. So we're gonna pull everything kind of towards the light into those recess areas. Um, and yeah, this will just help tie everything together. All right, so we're just gonna let that dry now. Um, if we need to do a second coat of that green in the sort of more recessed areas, we can do that. But you really want to make sure that like to, to sell that sort of glow effect, the very brightest points are almost white. If you look at any like light or lamp or something, even if it like looks colored, it's usually the glow off of it that's giving it the color. The very center is usually almost white or very just off white. So try and preserve that while getting the color around the source and you should be good to go. And that's basically it. Um, so I'm going to go and finish painting his base now and uh, do his skin stuff and that'll be him finished. Um, so you're probably going to see some nice finished pictures of him now. I hope you learned some things from this. Uh, we covered quite a few different techniques from sort of slap shop, base coat type thing, um, all the way to glows and texture and leather and all that good stuff. So hopefully this was useful. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions or if there's anything else you'd like to see from me. And uh, yeah, we'll be back with more stuff from the Brothers Grimdark very soon.